What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we are actually in the past. But let me explain what's going on first. From the last episode we replaced the uh, ICP and IPR sensor and somehow got the truck starting and it shortly died right after. And I have came to the conclusion that it's the high pressure oil pump. I'm going to show you guys why. So as you know we need at least 500 to even crank this girl over and when I start cranking you'll see that it cannot get over like mid 400s sometimes high 400s and then once in a while the truck will run for a little bit it's very very odd I'm gonna cycle it one more time all right here it goes See, and it just jumped there, and it will just not exceed. So I just had the slightest little burp, which it probably got over 400, and then the ICP just does not climb, which I think there's a leak, O-ring leak, some type of leak. So I'm gonna get all the parts ordered that I need. Welcome to the future now. Uh, I got all the parts that I needed to do the high pressure oil pump. You need this tool to get the hard lines off of the oil pump. We got the remanufactured high pressure oil pump from Pensacola Diesel in uh, Florida. They sent me a kit of O-rings also with it. This got more O-rings and the gasket from eBay. So because we have the early 6.0 we partially have to remove the intake manifold. So we got intake gasket here. Some other stuff that I'm replacing while I'm in there. This is the oil pressure switch. Another O-ring for the intake manifold. This is the EGR gasket kit. And then like updated turbo lines. Showing you the part numbers on all of these. And the oil feed line as well. I will be putting all of these parts in the description because the last thing I want you guys to do is not be able to find these things. It is harder to find certain things, but that's why you got eBay. Now let me show you what needs to get removed and what I already got out of the truck to view it a little better. So we got the battery box intake assembly off we got the upper and lower intercooler um, pipes off i just took out the two batteries just because just to free up some space because i am working under here removed the degas bottle and just pushed it away to the side now this whole assembly your fuel filter and your oil filter assembly needs to come off so that requires you to remove these hard lines here and four to Torx bolts. I'll try to zoom in on one of them. Yeah, right there, you can see them. One here, one here, and then two in the, on the left side. All right, so we got the, oh, it's pissing diesel. So we got the assembly out. This is what it looks like in the valley. Next up, we're gonna get the alternator out. So these are 13 mils. All I did was crack them first. And then you can use the tensioner. You can turn the tensioner to loosen the belt. Just gonna pull it right off using my hands. Should look something like this right here. Now you gotta get that boy out. There's gonna be a 10 mil there, down there, right there. Take the 10 mils out, then remove the V-band from the, the exhaust attached to the back of the housing of the turbo. Don't be like me. And completely forget there's another 10 mil the back side of the turbo only way you're gonna be able to get it is from right in here it's right on the back end a 10 mil wrench on there and then you gotta pry to get enough leverage with a bar on the back of the turbo and don't try to just pry it to just the two bolts out that, that was me stupid let's get this turbo out Turby! 
I got out the oil drain tube from the turbo. Now it's time to get out this housing here. Oh man, thing is disgusting. These are all 10 mils. I'm just gonna remove the whole intake manifold. Usually you don't have to. I'm just gonna do it just to for it to be easier. All of the 10 mils here are all loose and I'm just leaving them in. I moved the, the whole wiring harness, unplugged the IPR, ICP, all of that, um, and just moved it forward. Get this big boy out of here. I got it out, it's a lot worse than I thought. Here's the intake manifold out of the truck. There is a bunch of material that are gonna go into this. Look at this thing. This is just a pigsty. So for right now, I'm just gonna try to quickly cover up these holes, not let any more junk in them. So it's day two. I got the whole EGR out. As you can see, it is fucking bad in here, mate. Before I even remove this housing for the H-pop, I'm gonna give this whole area a deep clean. All right, so with the valley cleaned up as best as I can, it's time to remove the H-pop cover. So these are all eight mils. I was able to get 90% of them with just a regular eight millimeter on a small ratchet, but I did have to go to AutoZone and pick up this eight millimeter wrench to get the bolt right under the EGR um, part of the exhaust. It's literally right under here. So I was able to just get under there like that and loosen it right up. So that, that's a little tricky. Sucks you gotta buy an eight millimeter wrench if you don't have one to get this, just to get that bolt, but it is what it is. Cover removed. The IPR and ICP sensor were also removed. There it is in all its glory. So now is the grave step. I'm trying not to let as much of this disgustingness get in there because we don't want to contaminate the oil system. So now I'm gonna get off these two eight millimeters here and then one, two, three, ten millimeters holding on the high pressure oil pump. You are gonna need this tool here to disconnect that line, this hard line right here. Let's get onto it. The H pop is removed. I did get that O ring that was sitting there out as well. Just gotta clean this whole area up. It is disgusting. All right, so I'm here at the bench. I got the top oil branch tube that attaches to the top of the H-pop. I got the H-pop here. Um, right away, just looking at it, it looks nothing different from the new refurbished one. Uh, clearly, it's something might be internal based on the testing. Only thing visual, that I was able to notice was right there. You can see where the light is in between the gear, like right in behind it here. It looks like the seal is messed up and that could cause leaking because as you can see on the new one, that seal is fully seated. I really have no idea uh, looking at it, what could be failing, placing it and oh, hopefully it works. I just made like a cutout of cardboard that kind of looks like the cover here. So left side, right side with all the bolts. These three 10 mils here are for the high pressure oil pump them itself. And also these two little eight mils in the middle here. Then obviously the cover from left to right and this is the one that's the hard one to get that's underneath that exhaust so this is just a quick little cutout that i made just to help me i already have enough bolts that i have to guess on how to put back so yeah now it's the o-rings the most important thing you don't want to mess up these o-rings these are the this is the existing o-rings that i pulled out of here so this one was here this one was here 
And then last but not least, this one would be there on the block side. So this would go inside of the block and then this would be seated on top of it. So these are the old and here is the new that came with the refurbished H-Pop. Uh, Give you the number on that right there. So that's the O-rings for that kit. And they did it a little differently. I don't know if it's this is just an earlier because it's a er very early 6-0. This, this is yellow now. And the yellow one is the one that goes inside of the, the block side, which would be the one that's under here. So they probably did that so people wouldn't mess up. So this one's block side. This new one would go right there. And then this one, something like that, you see? Yeah, and it's in there now. So let's just leave it. People replaced this whole thing because I guess this leaks itself. And I definitely was able to see in there. You can barely see it. But there is a black O-ring and then some sort of either white at one point but now is yellow i'm gonna try to fish those two out all right so out of this insane amount of o-ring i got this on ebay in that gasket i'll put that everything on the, in the description so this is the old one which was the furthest one to the outside so this one first and then in front of this one it was the regular o-ring and I was able to find one that was identical. So this is, these are the two new ones, two old ones. Going to go into that first slot right there. And then as you can see, in the towards the front, it's kind of like a snap on snap ring. I used this tool to get this off in the first place. So let's get these new rings in there. See in there is that white o-ring first and then and then that black o-ring it helped getting the white o-ring in first then the black I tried to do the black o-ring then trying to shove the white o-ring in there it wasn't working and just aggravating me but there you go so next up is just this one so to do this one just grab the new black one here These picks will save your life. So this whole piece is ready to go now. And this is the bed O-ring. We'll show you how to put that in once I put the new H-pop in. So for the H-pop, got that little tiny O-ring up top already ready. That one will go underneath there. But before we install this, I'm going to get the housing completely cleaned up and clean up the bottom and also remove that old gasket here. All right, so now I have the whole housing all cleaned up. Now to get the gasket on there, there's this little indentation here, which is you just line it up with each other. So just make sure it's seated nice, just run your fingers along it, make sure it's all seated in there properly. Now that that's ready to go, we can start by getting uh, the new H-pop in. Alright, so what you want to do is start by putting this yellow O-ring. That's exactly how it's going to sit in there. Alright, next up, let's just place the H-pop directly above. Don't forget to remove this cap on the top and bottom. Now that the H-pop is in there, I'm gonna use the main three 10 millimeters holding it on in the middle. All right, so we got the H-pop with the three 10 mils um, snugged up, just hand tight. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. Now we're gonna put on this uh, discharge tube. 
but it's like a quick disconnect. So just gotta apply pressure. See, snapped in and just have it set up like that. Put these, the two eight mils and tighten them up as well. Now that the discharge tube is nice and snugged up, it's time to get the cover on. Just remember to make sure that all of this is all cleaned up to the best of your abilities. The edges here are nice and clean. Just make sure the overall area is clean one more time before you put this on because you don't want to have this leaking and be doing this job again. All right, so higher pressure oil pump cover is on. A uh, tip that I have is the O-ring from the top of the drain tube, the one on the tippity top here, right under the cover. When you place the cover, it's gonna have resistance and it's just gonna wobble back and forth. So what I did was I just set it on there as evenly as I could. I put the two middle screws on both sides and just snugged each one until everything was seated flush and then I threw in all the other eight mils and now I'm just gonna hand tighten them all it doesn't have to be crazy tight they weren't crazy tight to begin with that's all buttoned up H pops in H pop o-rings the cover the whole nine so I just want to give a quick recap of what I had to remove here uh, for you guys to do the job so intake manifold I took off um, EGR I took off, uh, fuel and oil um, filter assembly I took off, turbo, the turbo stand, the alternator, bunch of V-bands, and um, part of the wiring harness just to make it easier. Not to say that you can't do this without removing all of these parts, but this is what I did because this is my first time and I wanted to get as much out as possible to make the job a lot easier. Um, 100% positive that there's people out there that could remove a quarter of the stuff and still do the job, but that ain't me. Difficulty wise, this was probably a, I'm gonna say like a seven out of 10, which was, it was okay. It was just a lot of like little shit that you had to deal with and take your time and all that, but we do have a lot of other things to throw in, updated turbo lines, um, just new gaskets and such, uh, EGR, delete, a bunch of other things that I'm going to be doing in another video so this doesn't drag too long. You know what time it is. Time to cross this puppy off. Till next time, I'll see you guys. Peace!